down there with the hurricane and the path and the timing and all. Yeah, the fact that Milton is back up now officially to category five status with winds over 165 miles per hour. I'll point this number out. You remember last night when we were talking about how the pressure had dropped all the way down below 900 into the 800s? Well, it went back up overnight because the storm weakened a little bit, and now we're beginning to see it drop once again, which means the storm is reintensifying again. All of that to say that we've had a major hurricane out over the wide open waters of the Gulf of Mexico now for in excess of 24 hours, and it's probably going to stay a major hurricane all the way to landfall. Certainly not a five, maybe a strong four, uh, a low end four, but certainly a major hurricane as it comes in as a three. But none of that really matters in terms of its number when it makes landfall because it's the conditions that it's creating now well in advance of its arrival meaning that this storm, while it's still way down here in the southern Gulf, it is already beginning to send wave action up towards the Florida coast and that wave action will only get higher as the storm approaches, regardless of its weakening. So that's why we don't want to get caught up in whether it's a category four or three as it comes ashore. That won't make much of a difference when you're talking about these type of winds coming into such a populated area. Obviously, you have the wind damage, which will be significant, and you should expect power to be out across all of central Florida Wednesday night into Thursday morning. But it is very important where the actual eye of Milton crosses the coastline because it is on the right side of the track where Milton crosses that will have the highest storm surge where the water, the ocean rises above normally dry ground. Now, best case scenario for Tampa is that this goes just south of them because then you will have maybe a more of an offshore wind and that could help out a little bit with the storm surge. But for anyone from the center south, even down towards Fort Myers, you got to evacuate if you are in one of those evacuate zones as folks were uh, suggesting. That's Milton here closer to home this week. A lot quieter weather. Another chilly one coming up tonight. We were way down into the 40s this morning. I think we're there again tonight and tomorrow morning and can't rule out some upper 30s either. So high pressure is going to remain in control of our weather essentially through the end of the week. As this high goes east, though, our winds will go southerly and we'll start to warm up as we get towards the second half of the week. Right now, most of us generally into the low 70s this afternoon. And as you get in closer within the 275 loop, you can see it's 72 in Hamilton, 68 in Mason, 70 Loveland, 70 in Alexandria, 72 out there in Harrison right now. So officially here in Cincinnati, we're currently resting at a nice comfortable 71. Look at the dew point. Look at the humidity, clear skies, another chilly night for us. Future cast is very quiet. We've got nothing but sunshine on deck through the end of the week for us around here and going into the weekend. So our weather's on cruise control. 44, another chilly one tonight, but as you saw there, there could be some upper 30s out in the burbs. A great fall day tomorrow, 75 for an afternoon high. Chilly start, hoodie jacket weather in the morning, sweaters, and then pretty nice by afternoon. Here's your seven day forecast. All right, we're in the mid 70s through the end of the week. The nights, the evenings, and mornings, fall ish. And then on the weekend, we jump towards 80 ahead of a front. But look what happens next week. We haven't seen one of these on the seven day in what, three, four months now? How about lows maybe next week, likely in the mid 30. So could have our first frost advisories next week. Kevin's like, let's not talk about not snow ready. anytime <laughs> soon. We know how people get around here.